Okay, today we're going to have our first program that's going to make a decision. And what that's going to do is, based on what the user enters, either have one result printed to the screen or something else. So it's an either-or type of situation. Here's what a sample sort of flowchart might look like. Program begins here. Uh, say this for shopping for a mobile phone plan. We're going to do something different, though. A person might evaluate a plan, select it, and then to see if it works, it's like a yes or no question or an either-or. Does the phone work with my plan? If no, there might be an ending message. If yes, then the computer or the program might lead the, the person in a different direction. So we're going to do something like that. So open up a text pad. Run your macro. Add an import statement if necessary. And you will need one. I'm going to call this one if statement. If is the key word that is going to help us make our decision. I'm going to save this. And the first thing I'm going to do is declare an input variable called uh, string input. Set that equal to a null value or nothing. This should look familiar. Then I'm going to add a J option pane. Set it equal to input because we want to take the user's information. And the question I'm going to ask uh, if you're on the one yard line in the Super Bowl, do you want to run or pass? That's the question. Now, if this were a real program, like uh, we had actual customers using, we very specifically ask or prompt them as to what they need to enter. But in this case, they're going to need to type in run to run or pass to pass. Now, to make a decision, we have to use the keyword if. And what we're going to do with that, that's our control structure. If something is true, if what is in these parentheses is true, then something's going to happen. Such as, if it snows 12 inches tonight, we won't have school tomorrow. Something along those lines. Now, if statements, notice there's no curly brace there, or excuse me, no, no semicolon there, because it's going to use curly braces. And this is when you'll start when, uh, uh, indenting a little bit. However much works for you. Because when we start having a lot of curly braces, it'll get confusing. So if what's in here is true, then what's between these two lines will execute. If what's in here is false, we'd skip it. So if we don't get 12 inches of snow, for example, we don't get a snow day. We just go down here and go on with our regular day. So I'm going to throw out uh, some output. I'm going to copy that, paste it in. Chose pass. All right. So this will only execute once again if the user enters pass. And to do that, we're going to test for a string condition. Run those here. And this code, or all the code in between here, only executes condition is true. All right, so let's do that condition. So what we're testing is we're going to see if the input, the value stored in that variable, input dot equals and in parentheses, in quotes, pass. I'm going to tighten that up there. So I'm going to compile it. Uh, let me add something, because if, if this if we don't type in pass, uh, nothing will happen. I'll type in delay of game penalty. So now I'll compile. Oops. Control 2 to run it. 
want to run a pass. So once again, our user doesn't know whether it has to be capital uh, or lowercase, or do they have to write a complete sentence. If they type out, I want to pass, that didn't work, because it has to be exact. So we're going to have to type in this all in lowercase. So I'll run it again. I'll pass. I chose pass. Oh. But notice, we still got our delay of game penalty, because we didn't execute on time, or rather, we don't have our code set up properly. Because whether this executes or not, once we get past the if so statement, then we're going to have a, um, uh, this is going to run regardless. So I'm going to comment that out for now. I may come back to it. And let's copy this whole thing. I'll just paste it because we can be nice and lazy. Turn that into run. You scored a touchdown and won the Super Bowl. So you can see sort of the logic. If you're playing Madden football, you're making these decisions based on the buttons on your controller at home if you're playing on an Xbox. And the computer is going to say something like, if you chose button one, pass. If you chose button two, when the play runs, you might have receivers A, B, C. So if button dot pressed is equal to one, two, or three, it's going to go to that receiver. Now, the logic can get much more complicated than that. But underneath every decision made by a computer are usually these if statements. All right, let's compile. And let's test. You scored a touchdown and won the Super Bowl. So that works.